which leads me to ask, are there controversies about equal protection that remain to this day that are still being fought over? Certainly there are. One of them is the one I just talked about. How much can race be used? We all agree it should be usable as part of a description of a suspect by an eyewitness, but when you go beyond that, you know, to screening all um, Middle Eastern looking men at airports, uh, then you get into uh, a dip more difficult territory. And that involves not just equal protection, but religion and other things as well. Uh, how you treat um, sexual orientation is a big controversy still uh, under the Equal Protection Clause. I think disability is an area where we don't actually know how equal protection should operate because like race, like gender, like sexual orientation perhaps, disability is a, a trait or characteristic about somebody that they don't really choose. It's part of who they are. Um, so, uh, you know, these are all areas of, of of controversy, even age. I think laws that discriminate against young people uh, should be somewhat uh, troubling under equal protection because older people aren't going to be young again and don't have an incentive to take into account the interests of young. Um, if, you, if you're discriminating against old people, at least you're not as worried because young people know they aspire to be old, and so there's a little bit more of a reason to trust the process. Uh, but these are all areas where equal protection law is still in some flux. I'll end with just one quick question. Is age, because you just mentioned it, is that subject to intermediate scrutiny or rational scrutiny or strict scrutiny? So thus far, age has been subject to rational basis review. It is not uh, uh, viewed as troubling. But part of the reason for that is the, the uh, cases we've had involve discrimination against older people. And as I intimated, I think discrimination against older people is less troubling than discrimination against young adults because you can trust young adults to worry about old adults since they're going to be older someday. They wouldn't, favor, they wouldn't vote for laws that, uh, that down the road are going to hurt them. Whereas once you're 65, you know you're never going to be 18 to 25 again. You have less incentive to care about them, which is not to say that you don't have kids or grandkids and you can't be selfless. But I just think structurally there's an asymmetry there. So I have to ask, what do you think might actually be the next constitutional amendment that passes? It's a big question. I'll start by reminding everyone that very few amendments pass. There's lots of them that are proposed. It takes a lot to pass. So amendments about abortion and flag burning and religion in schools, they never passed even though they had some steam behind them. Uh, one amendment that might have passed if the Supreme Court hadn't moved in that direction anyway was the ERA in the 1970s, the Equal Rights Amendment. I don't think you're going to need the ERA or something like it given the, the, the place the Supreme Court is at concerning gender equality. It's possible there'll be an amendment involving sexual orientation um, equality that passes. I, I tell you one amendment that I would like to see pass is one that uh, enshrines a national popular vote mechanism in the Constitution for our presidency. I think we've moved in that direction. Uh, and I think the, the clunky electoral college that we have uh, is hard to defend and, and probably came into being for some bad reasons related to slavery. Uh, so I'm not going to make a prediction of what will happen, but that's one that I would be happy to defend um, uh, and, and I don't think is a partisan uh, kind of uh, argument. I think that's just consistent with the, the democratic improvements that we've already talked about in this session.